what we've got here this morning is two generations of Helms boys. I have wanted to put together a father and son's hunt forever. So you and I had a hunt, an opportunity to do a family hunt, but you and I get together and do that pretty often, a couple times a year usually. Yes. But my brother, Scotty, my younger brother, well, I hadn't hunted ducks waterfowl with him in like 15 years since I moved to Wyoming. Okay. And last year, we had the opportunity to get all three of us yes. in the duck blind together. Yeah, that was cool. For me, it was super special because I don't get to hunt with my brother at all. Like, big game tags in Wyoming are hard to come by. Deer tags in Wyoming, my schedule doesn't necessarily allow to, for me to go back and hunt there very often. So for it, so to be able to have him come out and bring the whole family, bring his wife and his daughters so the cousins could play, and then we had Hondo, whose first year, we just released Hondo's, well... A couple days ago, we released Hondo's first real hunt that we actually filmed. And he did really, really well. But there was just a lot of cool stuff that happened that weekend. I mean, well, we had um, we had talked about it back in Iowa. And I live in Iowa, uh, very close to Scott and Tisha and their family. Come out here as often as we can. And um, I get to hunt with Scott in Iowa for bow season. And, uh, yeah. well, we don't do a lot of small game hunting there. Uh, we have lots of pheasants, but we don't have a dog and so forth. Um, and when this opportunity arose, and I'd been out earlier, I told Scott, if you, you know, if you really want to get into waterfowl one last time or one again, time to time to go. And we were sitting at our kitchen table, and Tisha said, "Well, why don't we all go?" And that's what happened. I wouldn't get too crazy. I just our cover. Get the shoes over there. Oh, look at this guy on the left. Hondo! Good boy, Hondo. Hondo! Good boy. Good boy. Hey. 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 I'll come here. Oh, that's pretty. Look at that, right in the beak. Nice shot. <laughs> that's pretty. That's been a long time since I showed a great mouth. You <laughs> smoked him, dude. Good shot. Cool. Cool. What, 14 more like that? Yep. Yeah. 14 more. No. Hey. Get up there. Be nice. Sit. They all came in singles, I think. Yeah. Come here. That's sweet. Sit. Look at those chumps. What he said. Look at those chumps taking yeah, no the selfies. <laughs> Look at my duck, Dan. <laughs> no, it was perfect. It, because back in Michigan, you raised us on hunting ducks and geese and small game, grouse, woodcock, rabbits. Because back there, the big game opportunities are very limited. Basically, have deer. White you tails. can draw a bear tag, but otherwise, you have white tails, and that's it. Right. But the the bird hunting season is much longer, and you can hunt a lot longer. And you got us into that from a, from an early on. So, well, I mean, what? how important is it in your mind to get your kids involved in hunting? Like, you, my brother and I owe, Scotty and I owe everything to you as far as hunting is concerned. Because you you're the one that lit the fire. Well, and, and I think the, basically you just give your kids an opportunity to go with you, measure their excitement about what's going on around them talk to them about the environment you're in talk to them about the animals that and birds that you're hunting and and provide opportunities and you guys watch me do an awful lot before i ever let you have the gun <laughs> there was a lot of times where it's, stay here don't move i'll be back right <laughs> and and that's kind of intimidating when you're in the north woods in the upper peninsula and your dad walks away down the trail and and we just kept working at it, you know. And then when we moved out back down to the lower peninsula and got into more grouse and woodcock hunting, and then I don't know, you were 
12 or 13, and Scott, your brother would have been 10 or 11 when we went to South Carolina to the quail plantation. I remember that well. And um, we got there, and the, the guide said, well, we had some guys here last week, and boy, they were they were good. They shot like 35 birds in two and a half days. And by noon on the first day, we'd killed, the, the, you could shoot 10 birds apiece, and we killed our 30 birds. And then that afternoon, we went out and killed 30 more, and you guys all killed your own 10. And then the next morning, we went out and killed 30 more, and the guy taking us out said, do you guys want to do this again? I said, no, no, we're, we, we've had enough. And uh, when we got ready to leave, he said, well, I'm going to tell you, and this is kind of a regional slur. He said, there's a reason that we lost the war. He said, you Yankee boys can really shoot. <laughs> and that was, that was my boys. Um, and I was extremely proud of them. So that was, that was just one incident. You know, there was just all kinds of stuff that got you excited about it. I mean, other than the weather, it was a beautiful morning for middle of January. And we went down to the blind, and we hadn't been settled in very long. And Dan was filming, and we were very patient. Shooting light had come, or shooting time had come and gone. And there was birds, hundreds of birds trading up and down the river. And this flock came by, and out of the corner of my eye, Scott was on my left, and out of the corner of my eye, I saw him stand up and shoot. Yes, sir! Are you kidding me? I was, saw him coming, dude. <laughs> dude, dude got my pintail. And I heard Dan holler, yeah! And out of probably 25 or 30 birds, he picked out that pintail and killed it. And we stepped out of the blind. You guys went on down the river, and Scott actually found the bird himself. That was wild, because the way it came over in that particular blind, if birds come from the left and they're, and they're not... The bird wasn't decoying. It was in shot, in effective shotgun range, but it was it was just trading down the river in a flock of I don't know five or six mallards, like you said. Mm -hmm. And he picked it out and he killed it. Well, it was high and it was going pretty fast. Yes. It, was, it was a heck of a shot, honestly. Oh, yeah. Both you guys are good shots. No, he just barely, Dan just barely got it on camera. Kind of not see it, but it falls. And anyway, but the bird falls down river, and that river's fast. Yeah. And by the time I got the dogs down there. Hondo in particular was, in hindsight, he was lined out swimming right down the middle of the river as fast as he could when he was chasing that bird. And I thought the bird had fallen on the opposite bank, so I needed him to hunt there. My bad. I should have let the dog go. He would have brought the bird back. I called him off, called him back, and had him search on the opposite bank. My mistake, because the bird got away. Yeah. And this is a trophy bird. I mean, this is oh, a Drake yeah. pintail. His... This is a bucket list bird for a lot of people, but especially guys from Michigan. Oh, yes. And I'm frantically searching the opposite bank with Hondo and Mackinac, and Scotty just takes off downriver. And it's like it sinks in how fast the current is, and he just takes off downriver. And he's gone. And I'm, we're looking around, and I'm, I'm starting to panic. I'm like, no way did we lose this bird. And all of a sudden, I see Scotty coming back through the brush, and he's not saying anything, and he's got that Drake pintail in his hand. Where was he? Chasing down into a log pile. Down there? I lay down. So he was down there. I lay down. So the Hondo was on him. He didn't even bust, he didn't even bust him up, dude. Oh, congratulations. Pretty sweet, huh? What a bird. Congratulations. Yeah, that's awesome. Not a big, big Drake. They're not but... big. Look at, his, look at his sprigs, though. They're nice and long. Yeah. He's got better sprigs than mine does. There's a mounter right there. That's pretty cool, huh? Congratulations, you know, man! I saw him way up there in that flock, and I'm like, I gotta shoot at him. I gotta try it. That was sweet. Like 300 yards downriver, washed up in a log jam. Yeah. He just went downriver and found it. But I have to tell you, that's the stuff your brother does. <laughs> I mean, if, if there's a absolute possible way for anything to go any better it will happen to scott yep he's the golden boy there's no doubt about it and and i'm not knocking him he's my brother i love him um he is incredibly lucky but he also makes his own luck you know he he's hunted enough we've all hunted enough thanks to to you getting back to 
instilling those hunting foundations and fundamentals in us, he knew enough to just take off down river. Mm-hmm. And most people wouldn't have done that. And that bird would have been lost. Right. But he knew if there's a chance I'm going to find it, it's going to be in an eddy someplace or it's going to be on a rock or it's going to be washed up. In a, and he's looking in all the right places because he's a hunter. Yeah. He knows where he knows how that stuff works. Paul, oh, I was so happy to find him. He's way the hell down there, almost to the corner. Well, I figure he's in the current. I shouldn't have shot, but I'm like, dude, that might no. be the only chance I get you it. You should have shot. You did the yeah. right thing. Cool, cool. So what's it like having both your boys here hunting with you? A dream. An absolute dream, Dan. I've done this for so many years with them, and I was always the one who did, who set the decoys and took care of everything and told them when they could shoot and made sure they had shells and stuff. And now the roles are reversed and I love it. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. Dan stuck the camera in your face after we had a pretty cool volley. Yeah. Scott, Scotty killed his first Drake pintail. Yes. Which he he prefaced the whole trip, the whole hunt with, I'm coming out there, I want to shoot a pintail. And of course, okay, that's cool. We have some pintails around, but they're not everywhere. Oh, no. And we found one scouting the day before. <coughs> and I said, there's your pintail, dude. Like, no way. Then there's thousands of birds. There's no way that he's going to kill that one pin to Drake pintail. Well, he did. Yeah. And then Picked we it had... out of a flock of about yeah. 25 birds. And then we had a pair of geese fly right over, and you guys doubled out of those when I was getting another bird. And it was just an awesome morning. But there was one point in particular where Dan Picard was filming, and he stuck the camera in your face as we were recovering a bird. Yes. And you talked about how special it was to be able to hunt with your boys. It's special for us to get to hunt with you especially in something that we grew up doing together, to get yes. to do that again yep. is super cool. But tell, ex- explain more about what it means to you at your age to have two grown sons to still hunt with and then have the next generation coming along. Well, I'm excited that, that um, I mean, you have two girls and a son, and Scott has two girls. Uh, JC just turned eight. And uh, I, I'm looking forward to taking her down to elk camp next fall with a little 410 shotgun and walking some roads and seeing if we can pop a bird. Um, to hunt with your own kids, it's kind of a kind of a reversal of emotions. You have you guys want me to kill the animal because that's what it's evolved into, you know. I'm not 40 years old anymore. I'm not agile and quick, uh, if I ever was. <laughs> I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> and so the best incident I can relate is Scott had a, a beautiful nine-point buck on the farm, and and your brother's a, a whitetail magnet. All he has to do is walk in the woods, and they walk underneath. Well, he works hard at it. Oh, I, absolutely. Um but 
the first day of bow season, we went out and about 80 yards, this buck walks out of the brush, walks up, stands on a hill broadside, gives me an excellent view of him, and Scott says, Dad, that's the buck I want you to kill. I hunted at least every other day for the whole entire season, never saw him again. It evolved into late muzzleloader season. I hunted four nights, never saw him again, um, killed a lesser buck. And the night after I killed my buck, Scott went down, sat in a stand, and this buck walked out and stood right in front of him. And, of course, he, he shot it. And I helped him with the retrieve, and I was excited. And he looked at me, and he said, what are you so excited about? I mean, you, you should have shot this buck if you'd have been more patient. And I said, Scott, you're going to evolve into that. Your kids are going to do this, and it's not going to matter so much about what you do. It's about what they do. And that's I think that's the evolution of the emotions with your kids. And I'm really excited. I hope I live and, and am able to hunt with my, grand, my granddaughters, maybe my grandson, who's only two, so that puts me about eighty-one or eighty-two yeah. before he's going to be around. It might be a it might be a uh, a waterfall hunt in a goose blind somewhere with a heated a heated goose blind or that, something. But we could that would be we'll figure right. it out. Yep. So what do we got? We're 17, done. Seventeen drakes, something like that. Sixteen, because you won't, you you counted one. You didn't. I counted one that I sailed. Yep. All right, so that's a wrap here in Wyoming couldn't imagine a better hunt we've been trying for 15 years to get together my dad my brother out here in Wyoming putting the smack on the ducks and the geese and my brother killed his first Drake pintail ever unbelievable bird no, sir. congratulations man thank you that's a gorgeous duck couldn't ask for a better day we've we've we shot a uh, two-man limit cameraman Got to do some shooting at the end. Dan, the car running the camera. Just an awesome hunt. Thank you guys for coming. Thank you. I couldn't, this has been so much fun. Pretty good dog work. We're still working with Hondo. He's uh, he's doing good, he's getting birds, but he's a little, got a little bit too much go still, but that's okay. We'll get there, an old Mackinac dog. Still getting it done, right buddy? All right. Dream is a dream come true for me to be hunting with my boys again. It was awesome. We were able to put that hunt together. I hope we can do it again next year. Yeah. And I hope we can continue to do that and get the grandkids involved more. Well, I will tell you, from a father's perspective, hunting business-wise, daily life, raising a family, there's not, no greater pride than having your kids be successful and good at what they do and to be good people.